What is up, Jerk Squad? Today we are going to be showing you guys how to taxidermy shark jaws. Let's get into this. I'm joined here by Chris. What up? Chris is from lbsfguides.com, and today we're going to be taxiderming this little thresher shark head. Now, tell them what happened with this thresher shark when you caught it, Chris. So, we were out on a trip this weekend out at uh, Huntington, and when we pulled this shark up, it was all bit up. There was chunks missing out of it. Its tail was mangled. Um, there was no way it was going to live. If we threw it back in, we didn't feel it'd be ethical to, to toss that one back in. So instead, we decided to harvest it. Um, we grilled up all the meat and ate it. Now, once you get your shark, if you want to preserve the jaws, the first thing you do is cut the head off and throw it on ice so it stays fresh. First step is going to be cutting the jaws out of the actual shark. And so when you cut the head off, I recommend doing it behind the gills. Um, when this one's cut, it's cut a little shallow. We saved the, the gill joint or the uh, jaw joint, luckily but it, it's close. So I would save more meat on the backside, um, just so you don't risk cutting into the jaw, the joint and the jaw. These are all the tools that Chris is gonna be using today. He's got his really sharp knives. You wanna make sure everything you use is just extremely sharp. He's got a little pottery tool kit, but it works great for taking flesh off of shark teeth, shark jaws. And then he's got a bunch of little razor blades and little pole gadgets to uh, pull off all the meat. Chris is like inspector gadget up in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go for the bottom set of jaws. So I'm gonna feel in here and you can feel the bone. It kind of makes like a little V right up in here. And you wanna cut on this side of it, but be careful so you're not cutting up into the other set of jaws. Cutting right around that, that joint, kind of like filleting, reverse filleting. I'm not cutting down into any bone. I'm just cutting across the top of the meat. It helps if you stay under the skin and cut, because if you're sawing through the skin, that's gonna dull your knife real fast. Just don't cut into the jaw. <clears throat> okay, so the bottom jaw is now Cut off, you can see straight through. Oh yeah. So these are the joints that we're trying to avoid. So this little chunk right here is gill plate, or gill. Cut him off. Okay, now the top part is the, the more difficult one for sure. I'm taking my finger through the gills here so I can kind of feel where the bone is on this side. And I can feel like right there's the upper part of the jaw. Just avoiding that mm. corner joint much as possible because their teeth retract up into their mouth because right there you don't really see teeth but now if you pull you can see it comes right out so I'm gonna very carefully because these will still go through your hand very sharp I'm gonna cut that upper lip off now I'm not cutting straight down into it because I want to save cartilage back here so I'm cutting more into the head oh, turn the knife the right way Cutting into the head and just leaving the upper roof of the mouth intact for right now. You can clean that up later. And I'm just working, not cutting into that cartilage, just working my way around it, back to the front. My first mistake I made last time was, or the first time I did was I actually cut down and then I thinned out the jaw too much. So I figured out if you leave the roof intact, that works a lot better. Now we can see clearly where the jaw line is. So now we can trim off the Roof of the mouth, cutting through that fat, a little bit of cartilage, and then a little bit more over here. Wow, just like that. So we're gonna toss this guy out. And so I mean, at this point, if you want to, you could throw it out and let maggots eat it, stuff like that. I live in an apartment complex, so that is not an option for me. So I'm gonna get some fresh paper towel. All right, there's the jaws, you guys, look at it. <laughs> That's crazy. And remember, you guys, this thing came up on the pier half eaten. Like, I'm pretty sure a great white probably got this. You think a great white, Chris? Yeah, could have. What up, Jerry Squad? Okay, now the goal is to get as much of the meat off as possible, but again, you don't want to cut into the cartilage. So we're gonna get some of our, well, we can get a little bit more off with the sharp knife. All right, where's that cartilage at exactly? So it's gonna be all through here. So this is actually a flat piece of cartilage underneath here. So that's one that we're gonna be epoxying today. And you can see this is all the cartilage that we wanna save. When yeah. you're looking at here, you can't really see it. It's under the meat. So that you gotta clean off all that meat so that you get it to that. Yeah, this is the cartilage, you guys. So you don't wanna cut through it and you wanna preserve it the best you can. And these are thresher shark jaws from a bigger thresher shark that Tyler caught in the kayak. And so I'm just going through and cutting the lips off. You just kinda of have to feel it out. If you feel the cartilage start to rip or see it start to rip, you know, use the knife more. If you can pull on it, pull on it. Sometimes it helps if it's been outside for a day or two and the meat's a little softer. And no piece of the shark got wasted either. There were some people out on the pier that as we were gutting it, they asked if they could have the guts. Some, some cultures really like to eat all the pieces. And so 
There was nothing that got thrown away on this one other than what you see going in the bucket right now. And then we're gonna start using some of these pottery tools. And there's no predetermined one to use. You just kinda use whatever you think will work best. I'm just scraping some of that meat off. They do make some taxidermy tools that can potentially make this easier, but these pottery tools have been working great. I got them from Michael's. So now we got a lot of the outer lip removed. Now I'm, I'm gonna start cleaning out the inside and just doing the same thing. I can feel where the, the skin is still attached to the roof of the mouth. And so I'm just reaching in and kind of pulling it down so I can slide my knife in there. Just being very careful not to cut the cartilage. So I just flipped it over after I got a good little handle and now I'm working from the back side of the jaws from inside the mouth. I'm just kind of going through and trimming off that the roof of the mouth and the skin on the inside. Okay, and here, before you peel that piece of skin off, let's see the flap and what you have underneath it. So that's what he's taking off right there, you guys. And you'll so be able to see the bone and stuff. You just want to get all that skin peeled off. Yeah. So there's all the cartilage. But I'm just trying to get as much of this off as possible because it'll dry easier. It'll dry faster and uh, it'll be less work down the road. I mean, I could leave the meat on, but then as I dry it, I have to pull the, the chunks off as they dry. And I just like to get the jaws as clean as possible before I even try to dry it. Gotcha. It's also less smell. So you want to take a lot of precaution around the center here. So as you can see, that cartilage gets really narrow right there. So you don't want to pull on it too hard. You got to be careful when you're cutting around it because you don't want to break that joint. Is that the same for all sharks? Yeah, I've noticed that a lot on like the seven gill as well. I mean, even the big ones, it gets really narrow mm -hmm. there and that's the bottom of the jaw. And so it's there so that it can open and close its mouth because that's a, a point of movement right there. Yep. So this is going to apply to almost any shark of any size. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to grab my pliers and it looks like it's just one row of teeth right here. If you can see that. Mm -hmm. But if you pull up the gum line, I actually have many rows of teeth underneath. And so I'm going to try and get as much of that gum line off as I can. Yeah, check out this set of teeth, you guys. If you look real close, you can see that there's multiple rows of teeth in there, which is actually pretty cool. All right, Chris, what are the biggest mistakes that you can make when cutting the jaws out of a head? Uh, cutting the sides too close to the inside. So if you chop this off, it's, it's not going to look as cool, and you have less of a space to mount it. Um, also, not getting the skin off the, the teeth on the inside because I, it won't preserve as well. You can see I got a piece of my glove. Um, yeah, just breaking the teeth, cutting into the teeth, um, and then there's a lot more errors that will cover when uh, when you're drying them. Just going through and getting all these little chunks of meat off anywhere I can. Yeah, this is the time consuming part. You kind of just want to keep going through and get off as much meat as you can. So is it okay if you leave a little bit of skin on there so you can't get it all off, the flesh? Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna look as nice, but you can uh, also get it off after the next step we're going to do, uh, which is uh, soaking it in hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Um, some people suggest boiling it. I did that once and a lot of the teeth fall out. And so you got to like re-glue all the teeth in. Ooh. With the process that I use, the teeth don't fall out. Um, but you have to be careful because they can disintegrate if you use too much hydrogen peroxide for too long. As per usual, we got little Ellie over here helping us out. Ellie's doing a great job. What up, Ellie Cat? Okay, so this is probably good enough to, to go in the first round of hydrogen peroxide. So I did leave some of the corner in here because I can feel the cartilage right there. Sometimes with the bigger sharks, there's uh, like a layer of skin or meat that you can cut off in there, but I'm not gonna risk it with him. I'm gonna let the hydrogen peroxide do its work and then uh, it'll clean up a little bit so I can see if I need to cut anything else off of there. Um, but we got a lot of the lip removed. Um, so you can see it's just the teeth, no skin there. Same with on the bottom. In the back, we got everything pulled off. We got the lips off the back pulled off or the skin covering. And so you can, all the teeth are exposed. And up next is the hydrogen peroxide. So we have hydrogen peroxide diluted down with water. So what this is, is it's one bottle of hydrogen peroxide. I picked this up at Ralph's. You can get CVS anywhere that sells hydrogen peroxide. Really hard to get during COVID. Pretty much back in stock now. So I poured one full bottle of hydrogen peroxide in here and added three bottles of water. I always dilute it one bottle of hydrogen peroxide, three bottles of water. This dilutes it down so that it doesn't dissolve your jaws. Um, I used to use bleach and bleach didn't work as well. It kind of made my jaws yellow. And then I also, the, the first jaws that I did in bleach, I threw it in bleach and came back a few hours later and the jaws were gone. It was just all foam. Oh and uh, yeah, they it dissolved it. So I'm just gonna put that in there and I'll do it for a couple hours at a time. And so, um, what that does is it starts to dissolve the meat. It'll make the, 
the cartilage and teeth all nice and white. How long would you say that it takes to do this process? If you take it out every hour or so, how many hours do you want to leave it in for? So I'll leave it in for like an hour or two hours. I'll look at it to see how, the, how it's doing dissolving the meat. And I'll actually do some scraping on it again too because it'll soften everything up so it'll be easier to get some of the skin and meat off that I couldn't before. Then I might actually take it out and let it dry overnight. Um, and then that gives me the chance to use my Dremel with a, a wire brush or even a wire brush or my tools to pull more meat off. And then I kind of go from there to make the determination if it needs to go back in or not. But usually I do two or three soaks. Um, I don't worry about making the jaws shaped right until the last one because every time you throw it in here, it's gonna get super soft. You're gonna be able to flex them however you want for the mount. Okay, if you guys look at it, you can see that the hydrogen peroxide is boiling on the skin. Just like whenever you get a cut and it touches your flesh, it starts to uh, bubble up a little bit. And so this container, and this is overkill. So I was actually working on a big set of uh, seven gill jaws earlier. And so I just saved the hydrogen peroxide for this uh, set of jaws. You can use a small Tupperware container and they sell smaller bottles of hydrogen peroxide and I mean, you can even use a measuring cup and measure out like a cup of hydrogen peroxide and then three cups of water. So is there a certain way the jaws look when they're done? If you pull them out, you're like, yep, they're white, they're done. Or is what's yeah, the mean, telltale sign? You can see the meat's already starting to dissolve and stuff. Oh yeah, it I is. Mean, it, it goes pretty quick. Mainly what I'm trying to get to is nice white jaws. Here's the other jaws that I was working on uh, over the last week. Um, and so you can see it's all nice and white. There's no more chunks of meat on there. Um, so this is what it's going to look like when it's done. I have a drying board that I put this down and I use rubber bands to put it so that it doesn't curl up. If you would let this dry, this will actually curl up and fold into circles and it just looks ugly. Um, and the jaws might shut. It might be like all cockeyed. So the next step is to get it to dry and to get it to dry flat so that you can mount it like on the wall. This is Chris's drying board. As you can see, he's got screws in here and he puts rubber bands around here to hold the shark teeth down, the shark jaws. And this shark set of shark jaws, this is a soup fin shark right here. And you can tell he's already got some rubber bands down and it looks like it's been drying for a while. These ones are almost done. And he's gonna show us how to strap these down to keep them flat and make sure that they don't curl up. And the whole idea here is to just keep it in the shape that you want it to hang on your wall. So if you're pretending this is your wall, so we want these to stay nice and flat. So we're gonna start Rubber band and down. You can twist the rubber bands. You can get rubber bands of all different sizes. That is all the rubber bands holding it down. And you kind of want to just use as many rubber bands as you need to. You don't need too many of them, but you want to make sure it's secure. And also when you're putting on the rubber bands, you want to make sure that the rubber bands don't hit the teeth that much because they'll pop the rubber band right away. It'll snap it. And then how long would you say you leave these out here to dry, Chris? At least a week usually, if not longer. So it's not going to hurt it to be out longer. Um, I don't put them in my drying box. I put them out in the sun because the sun bleaches it even more then. Um, so I, I like to do the drying of the jaws outside. All right, now once you're done drying this outside and it's been out here for like a week or so, you feel it is dry to the touch and it's secure in the position that you want it, you're gonna wanna take it inside and you're going to put epoxy on this to help keep it intact. All right, so now we have jaws that have been dried for a couple of days. You can see there's a couple of yellow spots in here, a little piece of meat. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Dremel with this wire brush and clean them up. I usually like to do this down in my garage or I set up with the vacuum so that as I'm doing this, it's sucking up um, all the all the dust and everything as I go. All right, you guys, Surgical Master Chris is about to operate, dude, let's go. And what he's doing is just taking all the leftover flesh that was on there and all the discoloration so that way all you're left with is some nice white pearly jaws. All right, you guys, this is the Dremel tip that Chris is using. It is a little wire type brush type thing. And he's got the jaws pretty much cleaned up. And as you guys can tell, there was a little bit of a yellowing and a little bit of flesh on the side of these. And this thing is looking clean now. It's a lot whiter than it was. And you can barely see any flesh or any little yellow marks on it. This is starting to look really clean. You can even use that brush on the teeth to kind of give it a little teeth cleaning too. Um, one of the things you want to be careful with is when you're drying it, I use plywood. Make sure there's no dyes or anything in the plywood, any coloring. Same with if you use like cardboard to put on and flatten it. Um, because all of that dye, as it's drying, it'll suck it out of the cardboard or plywood and you'll get dye in your jaw. All right, now Chris is putting on a flatter tip now. And that's just because these jaws are curled in a little spot. And so I just want to get clean in there and in there. 
All right, you guys, it is time to epoxy the jaws. We got the jaws hanging up here. Just suspend them and make sure you put something underneath them so the epoxy has something to drip onto. And then we have the two-part epoxy, same stuff we used in tails. Check out the video. All right, we got FAMO wood glaze coat, you guys. That's the epoxy. You get one of each. One is the hardening unit, and the other one is the resin. Chris has his little glitter bucket here that he yeah. uses when he does his makeup. So we're going to use a, a silverish color pigment and then just a little bit of glitter uh, and that just gives the jaws a little bit of a sparkle on the wall when the light hits it. This glitter is an NYX pigment. You can get them at Ulta Beauty. Epoxy and glitter, then you're going to need a little mixing cup and you're also going to need a heat gun to get all the bubbles and heat up the resin a little bit. What are you doing, Ellie? You're not Busted. hiding. You're not hiding. All right, so with the tails, we use like a quarter cup of epoxy and a quarter cup of the, the resin or the resin and a quarter cup of the hardener. With this, much smaller so we're just going to use a tablespoon of each but first we're going to put some of our pigment in again follow the directions this is a 50 50 mix that's what the directions say putting more hardener doesn't make it better putting more resin doesn't make it better following the instructions is what makes it better so it's a stir for about five minutes chris's carpet's right here and there's something wrong oh my god it's moving what is wrong with this carpet what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> busted busted so the one thing i did forget to pick up is more brushes um, i like to use the hard foam brushes uh, just because the bristles can get into the epoxy so we'll just be real careful get all the loose ones out and now all we're gonna do is coat this just like we did the tail so gonna start at the top and we're gonna get all in the teeth because that way when everything's covered you won't have any smells. I mean, this really wouldn't smell that bad anyway. It's not like a tail where you still have all that flesh and meat. And you mm -hmm. just want to coat the entire jaw, right? Yep. Inside, outside, everywhere. I usually do two coats of epoxy too, so I'll do a second coat tomorrow. I mix up the same same epoxy or with the pigments and glitters and stuff, and I do it exactly the same the second time. And I'll let this dry overnight, so tomorrow afternoon I'll probably put the second coat on. It just holds everything together nice. And then if it falls off the wall or something, I mean, it's it's another layer of protection too, so you don't break it. So we got this thing all coated in epoxy and now we're just gonna hit it with the heat gun just briefly to epoxy in all the little cracks and crevices. How long do you go over each spot with the heat gun? Just real quick like this. Just enough to warm up the epoxy and get it flowing. All right, a couple seconds with the heat gun. You don't wanna go crazy. Yeah, cause you don't wanna burn the cartilage and you don't wanna completely melt the epoxy off. So it does get pretty liquidy, so you can see as I'm hitting it, it's soaking down pretty quick. All right, while this set of jaws dries right here, I'm gonna show you guys this completed set of jaws. And you can see how the epoxy sets up on there. It's nice and clear, and then it adds that protective layer. And then there you guys go. You got a complete epoxied set of jaws that are nice and dry, cleaned of any flesh. And there you go. That's the final product. So you can hang these on the wall. It'll look really sweet. It's a good time. So here's my, these were my first jaws that I did that didn't dissolve. And when I was telling you to make sure you don't cut off the flaps, that was the mistake I made on this one. See, I cut in too close before I got the jaws completely cut out. And so I actually cut off a lot of the, the piece that looks cool when you mount it on the wall. Okay. So that, that was a big learning experience for me, and that's why we leave so much more cartilage on. I hope you guys learned how to preserve your shark jaws today. And remember, this is a process to use if you have, say, a shark that gets tail wrapped, something, if the shark's going to die and you want to end up keeping the jaws and preserving them, this is something you can do. So huge shout out to Chris, Surgical Master Chris from lbsfguides.com. He's out here teaching you guys the good ways to do stuff. So make sure you guys drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, that's all I ask. Hit the link in the description and cop some perch merch. Check out lbsfguides.com to book you a shark fishing trip hosted by Chris and Tyler. And you can buy a perch media package if you want to. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. Ow.